I felt my throat going down the froggy path, and it just got worse and worse and worse. Froggy <laughs> I, I feel like this <laughs> might be a good time to uh, okay. cover up. Hey guys, Jeff with Pack Geek here. I am here with my good buddy, Ty Wilson of Breaker Culture. Man, it's funny uh, seeing you down here in the South. What brings you down here? You. There you have it. You're that, you're that important to me. Well, I appreciate that, Ty. <laughs> and uh, we definitely need to mention that we are broadcasting from Playball Sports Cards here in Arlington, Texas. If you haven't been to Playball, I mean, this place is amazing. This is a what? cool spot. And the, you, you brought your little guys, and they're running around, and they've been entertained the entire time. Oh, yeah. There's tons to do. I think they found an Alex Gordon bat that they're trying to convince me to buy. So. <laughs> Come in and see Mike, the owner. He's, he's an awesome guy as well. Hey, I want to tell you guys about a new sponsor we have at the Bench Clear Sports Card Network. They're called Starstock. You can check them out at starstock.com. You can go to the site. You can sell. You can buy. You can collect. You can invest. It's really cool. I suggest getting in early. There's some great deals there. I've been selling Luka Doncic rookies. I've sold more than half of my inventory already. Check them out, starstock.com. So I brought you on because you, you're you someone that follows the market sure. as much as anybody I know. Okay. And you, you, you're just a guy who likes to analyze trends, which I, I love. And so I want to talk to you about this trend of and growing popularity of base rookie cards. Okay. Because for, for the longest time, as we all know, if you've been in the hobby over the last decade, base rookie cards have kind of been, you know, just- Forgotten. Yeah, they have, exactly, yeah. forgotten. Like they, they've they really, it's it's almost a card that hits the common pile. Everybody's looking for the low number parallels, the yeah. autos. Like what is driving this, do you think? I think just barrier to entry, right? Price. I feel like you see, you see silvers in basketball, right? Silvers mm -hmm. have become priced so high where the average collector can't afford them anymore. And access to quantity, access to the card is important. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's you see that in baseball too, right? With the base flagship rookies now. Right. Where you used to just kind of toss them aside, but now you go send a, a very common Luis Robert rookie and it going for $20 raw and it's 150 graded. It's like, well, no wonder everyone cares about base. <laughs> right? It's well, and I, I do think because um, one of the factors that, that's driving base cards up is, is we've had a lot of people re enter the hobby. Mm. And <clears throat> if you haven't collected since you were a kid or you're yeah. just learning, the lowest common denominator is your base rookie card. It's like yeah. you know, here, here it is, it's the most common rookie card we're seeing out of this set. And, you know, as a kid, we wanted the base cards, the base rookie cards. Sure. And so I think a lot of that, there's, it's a, it's a volume factor where people mm. are trying to just hoard these base rookie cards. Yeah. And, uh, and then also it's just, it's the safe, safe card to buy, if you will. Yeah, yeah, so, so two thoughts on that. One, I think, I mean, the market's different. The hobby's different, right? It's become a marketplace, a true marketplace now. It, it is, so you it's, it's have, weird seeing it, but it's true. You gotta have supply and demand, and right? Yeah, There's a lot correct. of supply of base rookie cards, but grading in general has helped mm. kind of facilitate that and accelerate the excitement and, I don't know, velocity behind base cards, now, which is pretty interesting to see. Are, are you, do you grade a ton? I do. You do, okay, do. so do you find yourself sending in um, like the ratio of base cards to parallels, what, what mm. would you say that is? Well, I mean, obviously you get a lot more base cards, but I would say in, in a submission of 200, it's probably 175 base and oh, 25. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's just. It makes sense. It's just, yeah, it's just, an, it's an easier way of kind of conducting your business and people want it, people want, people want to buy graded base. That's true, it's a great that's thing. true. Especially highly graded base. That, that PSA 10 base rookie is, now becoming like the standard for collections. You know, that, yeah. that's a cornerstone. I shouldn't well, say well, it's a standard. And, and to that point, I mean, it's, it's, you got a lot of new collectors in the hobby and a lot of them don't understand the hobby. And so mm. they're not educated on what is a gold parallel or what is a silver prism. They don't even know what to call it. Do you call it right, refractive? Right, you call right, it like, right. It's well, shiny. Yeah. It's shiny, yeah. So you, you, you're, I mean, the lowest common denominator is the flagship, is the yeah. base, so. Good point. Um, okay, so I have a couple would you rathers here for you. They're, okay. they're on topic. So, okay. Ty, would you rather have own in your collection 10 Luca Prism Silver Rookies? Okay. Or 100 Luca Prism Base Rookies? 
Um, that would be a 10x difference. Yeah, I would take the base rookies right now. Really? Oh yeah. No kidding. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let me. My follow up on that is: Would you rather have 100 Luca Prism base rookies, or 300 Luca Hoops base rookies? Get rid of that hoops. Really? Give me you go, go straight all. for the prism. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Man. Although I did see the $600 hoops boxes over there. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking, man. Hoops is going through the roof thanks Crazy. to Zion. But also, you know, it's it's funny because you see new rookies come through, their product explodes, then there's this trickle down effect that then those products that are now <clears throat> more expensive than you ever seen them before, yeah. it goes back to the years before. So it, it it's amazing how this hobby works and the market within sure. this hobby works. Uh, but hey, I, I I wasn't sure how you were gonna go with the first question. I had a feeling you were gonna go with prism over the hoops, but just doing the math good. real quick. Of course, I know, I know, <laughs> he's a math guy. But, um, so uh, something you do hmm. that I really like. You you're a chart guy, and you you aren't. I, a lot of times you aren't doing this the basic pricing charts like we're seeing these sort of prices and it's going up. You like to do volume, mm -hmm. uh, volume charts. So talk to me about that. Yeah, and this well, is a breaker I, culture thing. If you guys haven't checked out breaker culture, please do because Ty does a phenomenal job of laying this out so uh, collectors can go in and see like what what's yeah. trending and, and what isn't. Well, we do it almost exclusively through Bench Clear now. So just there you subscribe go. to Bench Clear. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's one of those underestimated stats, right? Where it's very easy to go look at, and most of the time you go look at eBay and you see what, what what is something sold for. Right. But what you don't see is is what is the trend for how many have sold over time. And as somebody who maybe wants to invest or wants to kind of get ahead of the curve a little bit, you have to figure out what, what are people interested in? What are people starting to accumulate? What are people starting to buy? And when you when you can see that and you see it charted out, you see, okay, price is going up, but maybe volume's going down. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's not such a great opportunity, but maybe price is slowly going up, but volume is really going up. You think, right. okay, you got to get ahead of this. So, uh, do you have an example in mind of something that maybe the price hasn't caught up with the volume that, that's going out? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example, right? And it's a guy I follow really closely because he's a Mizzou Tiger, but like Michael Porter Jr., right? Yeah. So I, 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 and again, we chart all this out, but when when you saw basically six months ago, you saw Michael Porter Jr more or less the, the top volume getter in prison basketball. And he's incredibly popular. Incredibly popular, right? But his price was not responding right. yet, right? And you saw, you saw that a little bit with Shai Gilles Alexander too, right? You yeah. got you got excitement because people were buying it up, but the price wasn't moving. Price was, was flying under the radar. Right. right, and then all of a sudden, and we started kind of warning people, say, hey, look, look at the volume. Look at the top two volume getters, right? right. This this past week, it was Anthony Simons. Okay, right? interesting. We're, we're one week into the bubble preseason, yeah. right? And Anthony Simons is the top volume getter. And I don't know when we're gonna show this, right? But it, yeah, that's yeah. where we're at, and I'm, I'm showing people this. Is I'm this saying, because guys, he had a great scrimmage, or what? It's, it's right, I mean, we're gonna see that with MLB this year, right? Where you gotta consolidate the schedule, and a couple games get people super stoked, and they go jump in, and you see the volume, and price is usually a lagger. Yeah. And, and sports cards, right? It doesn't okay. move as quick as volume does. That makes so sense. Okay. You see Anthony Simons, you think, okay, well, if I can go out and I can go to starstock.com, right. or I can go to ComC and I can go grab these Anthony Simons for good prices, more, yeah. you're more than likely going to see the price respond a few weeks later. That is that is fascinating because I know you've, you've been a Michael Porter Jr. supporter for a while, but he's one of those names and for the sake of transparency, I, I own very few MPJs, but I do respect the guy and I know there's there's something there, but he's one of those players that a lot of people say, hey, I really like this guy, mm. but he's n still not getting big prices. And and you know, all the hype is around Jaw and Zion in this, the, he's obviously the rookie class before sure. that. But, uh, yeah. but it, it's amazing how players like that, and he still hasn't, he, he's shown some flashes of greatness, but he hasn't had a chance to mm -hmm. really go out and prove himself. So it's I, I'm always fascinated by players that people really latch on to, like there's something here, because I'm I'm watching for it. I think we're all watching for it. Yep. He has those those flashes of greatness, but he just hasn't got the time yet. But he might be somebody you guys want to look at. And, and check out 
you know, just check sell out Ty's me. Grass. I'll go exactly. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so um, I want to talk to you about prison basketball because okay. you did. You recently did an awesome episode of Breaker Culture on the top was top 15 yeah. prison silvers since, since release, 2012. Since yeah. And uh, can you just tell us about that if somebody hasn't seen that episode? Yeah, go check it out, right? So we, we look at the data, right? Because 2012 was when the first year of prison basketball came out. We just look back and just show who are the top 15 guys. Because it's very easy to lose focus because you see, basically, you go back to 17, 18 when Donovan Mitchell and Jason Tatum. And right. people forget right. that there were some really great rookies Oh yeah. the five years before that, right? And the Damian Lillards and the Bradley Bills of the world and, of course, the Giannis's and the Kawhi's. And when you see it kind of laid out in front of you, the 15 cards that, you know, really for any, for that matter, the top 50 cards, it kind of, it, it helps you realize the possibilities yeah. of prison basketball, right? Absolutely. And again, there, there's a different print run for the newer stuff versus the older stuff, and you see that in the pop reports, but we just broke it down to show you the top 15 most valuable cards since release in 2012. And it, it was, did anything stick out to you? Uh, it, the, yeah, well, for sure, I was, I was really, uh, surprised by the low pop reports on those early yeah. early releases, the 2012-2013 um, prisms, and then 13-14 uh, Giannis' uh, rookie year. Just at how low compared to like current your your Lucas Silver's graded and and Zion Silver's graded, like they were a fraction, an absolute fraction. Like you used to, I can't remember which one it, was it Kawhi that had like 10 Silver's graded PSA 10 or something. It was. Yeah, that might have been Bradley Beal. Okay, yeah. yeah there was a couple of those guys that you're just like, wow. Yeah, by Kyrie the way, Irving. <laughs> Bradley Beal, I feel like, is one of the most underrated players in the NBA. For sure. I mean, he is, if you've seen the guy play, he's lights out. He's always great. Um, maybe, I don't know how far his team's going to go, but like he, he uh, he's a great player, solid player. I think on a different team, he would, uh, yeah. he, he would, he would have something to say. Um, so, I wanted to ask you, how important do you would you say prism silvers are, especially rookie prism silvers are, to the hobby? Um, I, I think they're they're important, but to our point earlier, I think base prisms are probably more important. No kidding. I do. Yeah, I do. I, I think people forget, and it's, it's easy to forget because you, the, the prices of product become so expensive where it's hard to buy a product and, mm -hmm. and get the cards. But print runs on silvers are high. Yeah. Right? They're, they're much higher than anyone thinks. Right, right. right? And you're in the tens of thousands in most cases. Yes. And that, that is not that is not a short printed card, right? And, and, well, pe and people don't think about that. They still see a silver as something that's limited. And while it is limited compared to base, it there's still quite a few out there. Yeah. Especially the newer, the new, you know, if you go back to 2012 and 2013 sets, like, they were a lot more, they were way harder to come by back then. Very much so. Yeah, no, I think that they, they are the key driver. Silvers and base prisms are the key driver in everything that happens in the NBA market, period. So right now, the gap between a base prism rookie and a silver prism rookie, mm -hmm. I mean, roughly, 5X. is it 5X? Okay. Do you think that gap is gonna shrink as the popularity of base rookies continues to grow? I think it'll shrink for the older cards, right? And so the video I showed with the top 15, one of my points was, if you want to spend money, go spend money on base cards from a guy like Kawhi Leonard, mm -hmm. right? Where the, the multiple is four to six X, but there's 2,000 of them versus 15,000 of the John Morants. Right, right. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you potential Hall of Famer, you know, multiple MVP winner. Definite Hall of Famer. Go buy the, you know, go buy the base from that era. Um, but when, when you're comparing 15,000 silvers versus a 50,000, you know, base print run it's like oh, okay well it, it there's is. a lot that's gonna hit the market and in the grading so far behind right now we're gonna see just how grandiose the print runs on, on, on like 18 19 19 20 it's just that, mind blowing that's something that uh, I, I think most people don't consider is how many cards are at Beckett and at PSA right now waiting to be graded right and and how you know the pop reports never gonna get smaller so it's just going to continue to grow, especially these high profile cards. Um, but speaking of high profile cards, mm. we have a, uh, a relatively new release. Have you opened any of this yet? No, I haven't. So we have 2019-20 uh, Obsidian Basketball. Ooh. Um, this is, this. I mean, I love the way this set looks with the black backgrounds. It's just got a cool kind of 80s feel to it. Kind of looks a little bit like Tron, I think we've compared it to. But these boxes, they're not cheap, uh, but they're a great rip. It's seven cards per box. 
two autographs in each box, I think, on average. Have you opened any of these from past years? No, the only ones I have are the preview cards that come. Really? In, okay. And, you know, that came in Chronicles? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so last year, these were a sleeper hit. I know the <laughs> Luca, people are thinking, oh, it's a base, again, back to base. It was yeah. a base Luca coming out of Obsidian. People had already seen the preview from Chronicles. It, it came out before Obsidian's uh, flagship release. And uh, people were kind of sleeping on that base card. It turned out to be like a thousand dollar base card mm -hmm. because they are super limited. And I don't know if that's the case with these, but uh, but I gotta think a Zion or Jaw base is is not gonna do too too poorly on the market. The best thing about this box is I don't have to chew gum this time. <laughs> yes. Sorry, man, but it rules rule. Deal. All right. Oh. I'm happy you came back on after that. <laughs> was that 84 tops that we uh... I got a migraine about five minutes later. No, you did. Oh, oh. straight up. It oh, was geez. bad. Well, it was great. I'm, that, I'm so sorry. I, I feel no, you don't. I feel very responsible for that. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Right. I hope you pull something awesome, man. Yep. Um, you need to borrow this uh, this pen, my trusty survival pen. That's right. Bear Grylls pen. That's right. <laughs> There's also a compass at one end. <laughs> Yeah, what is the going rate for these? Uh, they're very expensive. Five? <laughs> I, I think more than that. I think, I want to say it's between five and six. Are we doing this together? Can uh, I, can oh, I pop yeah. into this? Oh no, get into it. Man, I'm going to open this every wrong possible way. There, it, look at this beautiful, look at that beautiful display. Ah, that's, tell you what, the packaging, it, it Panini does, it does just packaging It feels right. like royalty. It does, it does. Man. Tell you what, this beats any 51 mantle. <laughs> All right. I guess we got seven cards, right? So uh, you want, you want yeah, to show it to this guy? I mean, not, nothing too crazy, but man, they're just so sneaking cool looking. So Ooh, Alex man, Caruso, are... man, this is uh, number to 75. You wouldn't be able to tell. Oh. Are they, these are all numbered, right? Um, I don't think they're all numbered. I don't think. Okay, they're not, so. So I, I got a Rui. This is out of, oh, out of 25. That is a, that is a great card. I think that's the green. That is beautiful. Yeah, that's, we that's like incredible. That. Yeah, so the Caruso's number to 75. That must be the, I don't know, silver gray. Can you, purple? Yeah, something like that. That's a beautiful card. <laughs> something. Okay, first auto, Jarrett Jack. This is out of 75 with Brooklyn. Yeah, so you're a Ty Jerome, two of five, red. Oh. Two of five, nice. That taco fall, unfortunate pull, um, out of 75. It's, it's taco, not taco. Yeah, taco? <laughs> I, you know, you, you might call him taco, I call him taco. Uh, it's cool, auto. You're gonna like this one. He's kinda hot. Let's do it. Bull, bull. No! Number <laughs> bull, six bull. of 25. Man, if you haven't seen the highlights of bull bull's scrimmage, it was very impressive. So his base went from $3 to $30. Are you kidding in me? In 24 hours. Oh my gosh. Ungraded. Uh, Nasir Little, another rookie. Can you see that? Okay. All right, my first member is Denver Nugget Heavy. Mason Plumley, Green Auto. Nice. Ooh, I like the green. It's good looking. All right, you're gonna be happy with this. Dude, you're pulling all the fire. RJ Barrett, yeah. orange, orange <laughs> to 50. That's that's huge. How Four, much is that out of 50? 41 to 50. Oh, love it. It's beautiful. My goodness. All right, Jaron Jackson. Goga Badazzi. Goga, of course. He always makes an appearance <laughs> in my ribs. Ty, These tell, are cool. tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, BreakerCulture.com or BenchClear.us. I prefer BenchClear.us. I do too, man. Thank you. Yeah, man, thanks it's for good to me. see you, buddy. Yeah, appreciate All right, it. we'll see you guys next time. Oh, oh. Before you go, make sure to subscribe. See you next time. This is by far the biggest hobby shop I have ever been in. How many square feet is this place? We're just under 6,000. We have memorabilia all over the place. Pictures, binders, baseballs and footballs and helmets. I mean, we've got all that. And we're heavy into integrated cards. Hey guys, thanks for checking out another episode of Pack Geek. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks. Pack Geek.